So, um, this is a little embarrassing. Uh, graphics cards exist again. Yes, you can apparently just go into a store and buy one. And eBay prices on used cards of all brands are dropping to almost pre-scalper pandemic levels. The awkward thing is, you watched this video last year by some guy who made a very persuasive case for telling graphics card vendors to go f themselves, and subsequently you went and forked out on a Ryzen 5 3400G with Vega 11 integrated graphics instead. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who that guy thinks he is, irresponsibly recommending spending money on an APU like that. Well, whoever he was, he, he's long gone by now, probably no point in trying to track him down or anything. Let's just fire up the PC and see what damage has been done. The Ryzen APUs have been somewhat unattractively priced lately. At the time I made my last 3400G video, they'd skyrocketed to £180 and didn't really come down to more sensible prices until quite recently. I picked this one up a few weeks ago for 120 which still seems a bit high considering the 5600Gs available brand new for £160. Compared to that APU, the 3400G is starting to look a little dated. It's based on a refresh of AMD's first generation Zen architecture, with four multi-threaded cores that don't have the kind of per-thread performance of the current CPUs, and lack the high-speed memory support that APUs normally benefit from. On the other hand, it has one thing in its favour. The built-in GPU is a Vega 11, as opposed to the Vega 7 and 8 GPUs on the current generation APUs. This means it has 11 graphics cores, and although they are clocked somewhat lower than those found in the 5600G and 5700G, maybe there's strength in numbers? To find out, my test system is the one I call the moderately priced gaming PC, featuring a Tomahawk B450 motherboard, Vitru CPU cooler, and 16 gigs of V-Color RAM, capable of up to 4000 mega transfers a second, but limited to 3200 for this test. I tried multiple times to overclock the RAM a little higher, but even 3333 only made it as far as the boot screen before crashing. I did manage to OC the GPU from 1400 to 1700 MHz. I had a couple of issues with the overclock, but I'll talk more about that during the bench. And we're not off to a great start. God of War recently replaced its FSR 1 upscaler with FSR 2 which on lower end systems like this means that it sees less performance at equivalent settings. This is great for image quality, less so for FPS. At 1080 original with FSR balanced, the game only managed 23 FPS on average. Dropping the quality setting to low isn't the end of the world. However good FSR 2 is at upscaling, in this context it makes the difference between quality settings virtually impossible to see. And on the positive side, it pushes the average frame rate close to 30. Final Fantasy VII Remake is looking a bit more viable. The game doesn't have much in the way of quality options, but from previous testing I found it occasionally helps on APUs and other memory limited GPUs to drop shadows to the low setting. That being said, full 1080 is a stretch. I started at 1600 by 900 and saw close to 40 FPS on average, almost identical to the result from the 5600G. The 720 result was much worse than the newer APU, however, scoring just 48 FPS. Despite being the newest title on my benchmark suite right now, Elden Ring is pretty old school when it comes to resolutions. At 1080 medium, with shadows and textures turned up to high, the game looked remarkably fine, but runs like it's been kneecapped. Without resolution scaling or FSR or anything that would drop render resolution without harming UI sharpness, I had to manually drop the resolution to 1280x720. This resulted in an average FPS of 38, which in my opinion is still too low to enjoy Elden Ring, and you might want to drop settings even further. Still, on the positive side, none of the enemies disappeared mid-fight. It's a low bar, I know. I've got three solutions for gamers looking to play Forza Horizon 5 on the 3400G, and it all comes down to your own tolerance for low graphics versus low frame rates. If you're happy settling for a 30fps experience with higher settings, 1080 high with quality FSR will get you there. 
If, however, you're more inclined towards a 60 FPS experience and are happy to sacrifice quality to get it, 1080 Low with FSR quality gets you close. And although I didn't test it, I imagine a drop to FSR performance would get you the rest of the way. This is, of course, the canned benchmark, the worst case scenario for FPS in the game. So you can expect to see higher FPS in the open world and less visually complex races. Halo Infinite disappointed me on the 5600G, but that's because I wasn't familiar with the meta. That is, using the 30 FPS minimum cap rather than manual resolution scaling. I presume this is the reason why the 3400G does a lot better than the 5600G, scraping over 30 FPS in average in the campaign, though still dropping into the 20s. You can expect similar results in open world multiplayer like the big team battles, but smaller matches see about 10% more FPS. Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag and other smaller scale game modes, being less demanding, score about 35 FPS. I was probably expecting too much of the 3400G in Cyberpunk. I don't really like playing at the low preset if I can avoid it, so I started at 1080 medium. This managed just 16 FPS on average, and of course this was pretty unplayable by all but the hardest of hardcore low-spec gamers. Adding FSR quality brings that up substantially, averaging 27 FPS. If you have the FSR 2 mod you can expect similar frame rates by using it at the performance setting, though for some reason my mod vanished and I didn't get round to testing it here. Rainbow Six Extraction's canned benchmark is all I really know of the game, so forgive me if it doesn't accurately represent performance. At 1080 high without scaling, the 3400G can't even hit 30 FPS on average. Dropping the render resolution by 50% still looks acceptable to my eyes and sees a much more palatable 46 FPS. I've said before that dropping quality settings often makes little or no difference to performance in this benchmark. But if you don't mind the drop to low, you can squeeze out 34 FPS at full 1080, and again, dropping resolution can get within a stone's throw of a 60 FPS average. Splitgate doesn't feel great at 60 FPS. Maybe because I'm so accustomed to playing at 90 plus FPS on even weaker discrete GPUs, but what should be an acceptable frame rate in most first person shooters is just too slow here. Once more, I'm afraid it's time to drop the quality settings from epic to low. I know, I know, I'm upset too, but I was a lot more upset when I couldn't get my gun trained on anyone. Low settings brings the average up to 82, which is probably still too low, and you might want to drop resolution to compensate. I find I get a lot of kills at extreme range and I don't usually take the extra time to aim down sights, so sacrificing the resolution is probably something I wouldn't do myself. I mentioned earlier that I had some issues with the overclock, and that's not strictly true, but it was the best explanation I had at the time. Vanguard and Fortnite both crashed hard after about 15 to 20 minutes. Fans and case lighting stayed on, the screen went black and peripheral lighting cut off, and the power button didn't work. I ended up having to cut the power from the PSU. My first reaction was that it was related to the overclock, but easing off on the core clocks and turning up the voltage a little really didn't help. In the end, I concluded my CPU's probably faulty. A couple of pins had to be bent back into place when I received it, and I guess I was lucky that I didn't see issues with any other games. Anyway, the results for this game were the best I could get from the couple of online matches I managed to string together between crashes, but they seemed to make sense. At 1080 low with quality FSR, I saw 51 FPS on average, about 8 to 10% lower than the 5600G. Like with Vanguard, I was only able to benchmark 15 to 20 minute sections of Fortnite before it crashed. Thankfully, I suck at it, so I was usually dead by this point. At 1080 low with epic view distance, FPS was an unimpressive 60 on average and 32 1% lows. Now, Stutter Knight is apparently always going to stutter, so the 1% lows aren't a surprise, but the averages are a good 20 FPS lower than the 5600G. For once, I think I might recommend trying Performance Beta rather than DX12, though given all the crashing, I really didn't get round to testing that for myself. Apex Legends didn't crash at all, 
but it also didn't impress. I don't necessarily recommend playing Apex, or any Battle Royale for that matter, below native resolution, but if you absolutely have to hit 60 FPS, that may be your only option. Full 1080 can only manage 49 FPS, but you always have the option of dynamic resolution scaling. Warzone comes close to Apex for both averages and 1% lows at 1080. Using the low preset will net you about 43 FPS. Doing the same thing at 67% of 1080 will net you 65 FPS and a headache. A year on from my last look at the 3400G, how's it holding up? Well, on the positive side, there were no incompatibilities. Cyberpunk might not look it, but it's actually an improvement over a year ago, most likely thanks to optimizations made during the 1.5 patch released in February. Fortnite hasn't gotten any worse, which isn't always a given with free-to-play titles, and Warzone and Apex, if anything, might have actually improved. Of course, now we're in the scalper pandemic's post-apocalyptic period, and the landscape's changing a little. If you're thinking of buying a 3400G, more recent APUs look like better alternatives. They offer more cores and threads for those with an eye on future upgrades. Plus, well, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can actually buy graphics cards now. There are plenty of cheap 4 and 6 core Ryzen's, i3's and i5's on both the used and new markets, that you could pair with a 2GB RX 460 or Quadro M2000 or GTX 950 for not much more money than this old APU will cost you. So I guess my conclusion in 2022 is about the same as it was in 2021. If you have half decent RAM, an overclockable motherboard and absolutely no better options available, then the Ryzen 5 3400G can play games pretty well. It just wouldn't be my first choice. Hope that was useful, thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.